What's up guys? Today I'm going to talk about the Psalter and how it's used in the, in the Orthodox Church in a very basic way. I'll be showing you how the Psalter book is divided up and how to chant it and when you might use it and kind of how you might use it each day. So let's start off by looking at a Psalter book. Um, pull it up here. The Psalter uh, looks something like this, and it's basically a collection of psalms. Um, the difference, though, is that there are sections broken up called kathismas and stasis, or stases. Um, those are big words for... Um, kathisma is about nine psalms long. It's a section that's kind of recommended reading for in one sitting. And then um, stases are with in that bigger section of uh, Kathisma, it, a Stasis um, is about three psalms within the nine of a Kathisma. So anyway, let's let's look at our book here, and we can see how what that looks like. So here we have the first Kathisma, and it begins with Psalm one. So you're starting at the beginning of the Psalms. Blessed is the man that hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the pestilent. But his w will is rather in the law of the Lord, and in his law will he meditate day and night. So there's the psalm for you. And as I said, a sta uh, a stasi sorry, um, a kathisma is nine psalms long. So we'll go through this kathisma and see what it looks like. There's psalm 1, psalm 2, Psalm 3, and then this, where it ends at glory, both now, Alleluia, that's the end of the first three psalms called the Stasis. And um, the Stasis ends with glory, both now, Alleluia. It's an abbreviated section telling you to pray the following refrain. So you say, Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit both now and ever, to ages of ages, amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to our God. So alleluia is um, chanted three times there. Um, sometimes it will be specified. And at the alleluia, you make a prostration uh, called a matanya. It's the vow that we covered one time where you Touch the floor with your hand and come back up. So traveling along, we've got Psalm 4, Psalm 5, Psalm 6. And then again at the end of um, the next group of three psalms is the end of the second stasis within the first kathisma. Sorry if that's confusing. Again we'll do the glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and so on. So that's the second stasis. And then when you end the Kathisma, they usually do a kind of cool artwork. It ends with the glory both now and Alleluia again. Um, and it'll kind of usually indicate the end of the Kathisma is coming with a piece of artwork. Um, and then you turn the page, and you've got Psalm 9. Um, and you start a new grouping of nine psalms, roughly. Um, and you see the second Kathisma also has some fancy artwork there. And flipping through, you have your first stasis, second stasis, and third stasis. And then that's the end of the Kathisma. On to your third Kathisma. So, there, I hope all those pages turned out okay. Just flip the camera around. Um, so how is this used? How is the Psalter used? Um, basically, the Psalter is used in the church uh, quite frequently. Um, we read from the Psalms at the beginning of uh, all of our services. Um, for example, Matins begins with a reading of six Psalms. Um, some of the hours start with only two. And there's different numbers of Psalms that we read depending on the hour of the day and its kind of importance. Um, 
Vespers also has psalm readings. Liturgy has kind of a scattering of, of psalms um, throughout it. Um, and if you go to the liturgy, um, usually the matins is included before it. And so that's when you pray the psalms is during matins or, or throws. Um, so how you might use the Psalter for your personal use though, um, is maybe you want to pray a cathisma uh, one time per day if you really like the Psalms and that's something you want to do. Um, it's a good amount to kind of break up. Uh, we're going to have a youth vigil this coming Friday night and we will um, rotate every stasis, which is three Psalms, um, just to make it a little bit easier and manageable for each person reading. Um, so I have a small attention span, so three psalms is good to break up for um, kind of the youth age group um, with smaller attention spans like me. Um, so that that's how you might think about um, chanting the psalms, uh, is maybe once a day, maybe once every Sunday morning. Um, really is up to you, kind of what you feel drawn to do. Um, the tradition came from uh, both in Jewish culture, pre-Christianity. Um, their services had a lot of psalms because they're amazing and beautiful. And also it's been carried on into the church um, today in our services and also monastics. They, um, they do particular kind of insertions of psalm reading. Um, they'll wake up even at midnight and pray the psalms um, straight through. Um, I don't honestly know how many they do at midnight, um, but at times it can be quite lengthy. Um, a vigil like we are having on Friday night, you know, you might get all the way through the Psalms in one night. And so depending on how, car how hardcore the monastery is, you might get through a whole reading of Psalms in one night. Um, but typically, uh, those kathismas, the group of nine psalms, um, are inserted into services. So there's um, kind of a rule uh, of prayer given to monastics especially of how many kathismas they insert into their services. They might do one to three kathismas um, in the middle of a service, usually the hours and um, it'll specify um, that in the back of this altar, which could this was they use and things. So that's getting a little technical. But anyway, I just thought I'd tell you kind of where it comes from. And um, the goal for monastics is to get through um, uh, the Psalms, reading them, usually the whole Psalter in one week. Um, I heard a good suggestion recently where someone said, maybe just read a stasis every day if you can, which is three Psalms and you will finish the book of Psalms in a couple of months, two months. So if you're dedicated and wanna try that, that might be a good thing to try. Um, one last thing I'm gonna go over is how to chant the Psalms, um, cause that's also a new thing for some people. If you wanna try to be advanced and um, chant them instead of just read them out loud, um, it's good to hear the psalms and um, hear them out loud, rather, whether reading or chanting. So um, I'm going to chant for you Psalm 1 in the way that it would go. So you're just kind of being monotone and staying on one note. So Psalm 1 would go like this. Blessed is the man who has not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the pestilent. And it goes on, you know, for a while and... Um, sometimes monotone can be hard for people to pay attention. Um, it was for me at first. I didn't, wasn't able to wade through the chanting. So if you like reading better, that's okay too. But uh, with chanting, you would stay on that note through a whole stasis. And when you get to the very last verse, um, I'm going to chant two so you can see how. The first, the second to last verse would go, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all who without cause for mine enemies. The teeth of sinners hast thou broken. Just like before, monotone, same note. 
but the very last verse of the stasis, you would raise it kind of a note, and you would go, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, and then this is the last verse. Salvation is of the Lord, and thy blessing is upon thy people. And you kind of draw out that last note, and uh, that indicates to the other hearers and the priests that it's getting time to stand up and do the um, refrain, Glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and ever, to ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 and so on. At that section, we all stand up, um, and we make the prostrations together. So it's kind of a cool way where um, you insert uh, kind of bodily movement every th three psalms. That's to help us kind of pay attention and uh, stay engaged. Uh, it's really easy to tune out when reading through the psalms, especially if someone else is reading or like we're doing, you know, we're doing it late at night and we're doing it over Zoom and it's gonna be especially hard to pay attention. So um, good for you guys if you join that. Um, let's see, last thing, last thing, um, is that at times there is, um, for the beginning of reading the Psalms, uh, a prayer um, that comes from Psalters that have these prayers um, that basically just dedicate the Psalm reading to God, and they say, direct our hearts, O God, um, to, for the keeping of these words, um, direct my mind to understand them and help me after hearing them to do them, to do what I hear. So that's a really nice prayer um, that I'll probably pray on Friday night. And then um, after each kathisma, there are also prayers that can be inserted after each group of nine prayers. So in our Zoom meeting that we're doing, uh, we would add, um, those prayers after every three people read, if that makes sense. So each person's gonna take three Psalms. Person number one is Psalm one, two, three. Um, second person reading is four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine is the third. And then we would insert a prayer for the Psalms. And that's also a good way to help us pay attention um, to the Psalms as they're being read and enter into them more deeply. Um, as always, light a candle, um, burn some incense, and enter into the spirit of prayer. And uh, I hope you guys will do some of these things or practice them before our vigil on Friday night. And uh, we'll see you then. Peace.